cabin came from Boulder, Montana. I happened by one day and a fellow had been disassembling a house. And when I came by, there were just the log shells sitting there and looked like really nice hand hewn logs. So I pulled in there and talked to the fella. And sure enough, he was willing to sell this old log shell. So I bought that from him and I had to help him go ahead and dismantle and load the cabin up, hauled it home. That was about five years ago. And it's just been stacked out here ever since, just waiting for me to get around to doing something with it. So the plan is to build a log cabin shell. I'm gonna re-notch, reconfigure the layout of the cabin, the door and window locations. And so I'm gonna cut all new notches. So the, the cabin itself, when I get finished reconfiguring it, the dimensions are gonna be 18 by 22. which I think will be a pretty nice sized cabin. So some of these old logs have old nails in them, like this nail right here. So these are old cut nails. So the more conventional modern nails are round, but these have a square tapering cross section. So these old cut nails were manufactured up until about 1890. So there's a good chance this cabin predates the 1890 time frame. But there was very little rot on these logs. Fortunate there. It looks like they probably put siding on the cabin soon after it was built. Initially, the logs weren't even gray. They were still brown. Um, laying out here in the sun for five years, they did gray on one side. That's all right. So I just barely have enough logs to kind of reconfigure it according to my plan. So I can't make any mistakes or I'll be trying to search far and wide for another log. Using a log dovetail jig. So this jig is custom designed for the cabin logs that I'm using. So on average, I'm using logs that are up to eight inches thick and on average 12 inches wide. Of course, these are hand-hewn logs, and they all vary. That one's about 10 inches now after I've milled it. Some are a little bigger, some smaller. So the average gap is going to be this 2-inch gap dimension. So I designed this for an average of 12 inches height and 2-inch gap. So as the log width varies, that gap will vary. The first step to the before I mount this jig to the log is to pop a center line down the face of the interior face of this log. And every log is done that way with a, a chalk line on the center line. And with this system, the spacing from chalk line to chalk line going up that wall is a constant dimension. So even though the logs are highly variable, all the notches are very consistent. And I don't really have to try to keep track of how high I'm going to see if one corner's climbing faster than another as I stack logs. With this system, those center lines are all gonna be parallel with the floor, and they're all gonna be the same step for each course of logs. So this log is about six inches thick, and the jig will accept a log up to eight and a quarter. So these logs could all vary anywhere from even four inches to eight and a quarter, and the system would still work just fine. The jig attaches to the interior face, and any variability in the log thickness now will show up on the exterior face. So as I stack logs, if the, the thickness varies from, from log to log, the interior face will all be flat and on the same plane but the exterior is where you'll see the variability in thickness. So pretty good system. I sell plans for jigs like this on my website, logdovetailjig.com. And what you'll do is order and tell me what size logs you're gonna use and what size gap. 
A lot of people build with, say, six by eight logs and a one inch gap. That's a really popular dimension. And as you can see here, I'm using hand hewn logs that have variable dimensions. A lot of people use, just use uh, standard milled logs that are all consistent dimension. So I can design for whatever log size you're using and whatever gap that you want to, to use. And I've got quite a few other videos. If you haven't seen this log dovetail jig system in use, watch some of my other videos that go into more detail about how to build the jigs, how to use them. Um, but again, those other videos are not going to give you dimensions for constructing this jig. You, you'd have to order the plans off my website. And in order to get the dimensions, I need to know the, the specific log size and gap that you're going to use. And then I'll calculate custom dimensions specifically for your cabin. So um, I've also got a lot of pictures of other people's cabins over the years. I've been doing this now for about 10 years and had quite a few people build cabins and send pictures in to me. And they showed me pictures of the cabins they've built and some really nice cabins. And it might give you some ideas. If you're looking at building a cabin, ideas about how you might want to build. But enough talk, let's go ahead and put our center line down this log here. Your earlier, the first step before you mount the jig is to put the chalk line down the center of the log. And we'll do that on every log, on every course. And as you stack the logs, that chalk line is always going to be level. Even if the edges vary, that line will be level. And so the floor is, of course, going to be parallel with that line. And I'm going to offset this chalk line now five inches and mill the bottom off of this log and the other bottom course logs, front and back of cabin. And so these will sit directly on the subfloor. Now the two side logs, the base logs, We'll handle those a little differently. So right now I'm just working on the front and back walls and that's the lowest logs in the cabin. So now I'm going to take them over to the mill and take off the bottom edge here to get a nice flat surface. And we'll do that on the front and back wall first course logs. So if you look down this log, it's got a pretty good twist in it. At this end, it's tilting down on the right. And as you go down that way, it's tilting down on the left. So I've already marked my chalk line down the center and positioned my jigs. And I've put shims under the jigs to level them. So I'm level in the center. So I'm level here, and I want to make sure that the jigs are also level. So that'll kind of even out the twist, and I want this surface to be in the same plane as that down there. And it's also possible there may be a dip lengthwise, dipping as it goes that way or, or climbing. So I need to shim it so this face is in the same plane as that face. And I'm using the level to do that. So crossways, I'll make sure that both ends, the jig is shimmed to be level. And I'll attach that firmly in place. And then I'll pull a string down from one end to the other. And that'll give me an idea if I'm planing um, in this dimension. You can also sight down it just using your eye. And you can tell pretty close if there's a, a dip in it or not. Okay, we're looking pretty good there. 
So this is my bottom course long log. I'm only going to cut notches on the top of this log. I'm not going to cut my lower notches. After I make these cuts, I'll offset my center line five inches and mill that surface flat to sit on the subfloor. Let's stand this up and make our cut. Okay, so this was the midpoint of the log, so this is where I want to make sure I have it set where it's plumb at this location. So I have a little twist now at each end, but this is plumb here. So when I plane off this face, that should make the log sit right on the subfloor. I also had to jack up the one end of the log so that my five foot offset line is parallel with the bed of the sawmill. So I should be ready to make the cut now. I'll check each end of the log and make sure my saw cut depth is set to match my line here. Two and a half courses up so far. Looking pretty good. I'll probably have to do just a little bit of fine tuning with some of these notches, but for the most part, they look pretty good. Working with these irregular logs is very time consuming. You can see the gap really varies a lot. So there I've got a pretty wide, I should say, a pretty tall face on that third log. Then the other two are about the same. And those are interchangeable. So when I restack the cabin, 
I'll put this log in the middle. Bring this one up. And that will not affect the notches at all. But it will even up those gaps quite a bit. These cabins with hand-hewn logs like this, they always look really rough until you get it chinked and then it really makes it all blend and makes it look a lot better. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.